Despite being pretty different shows in general, Gekan Shoujo, Nozaki-kun, and Nisekoi are actually quite similar if you think about it. They're both rather popular shows with both boosting mal listings of over 300,000 people, set in high schools filled with genre trappings and character tropes, and even ran only one season apart. However, what stands out among these similarities as the most prominent is that both are known for their unwillingness to pull the trigger on the main guy and the main girl getting together and becoming a couple. Well, you may ask, isn't that just literally every single high school anime ever? Which is fair. Like 90% of high school romance anime are centered around the conceit that the couples take forever to form. The shows that are actually about functioning relationships that have already commenced or actually commenced during the middle of the show's run are far and away the minority. None of this should come as any surprise, for this is a rather common and well-known trope in anime. Now, what makes Nozaki-kun and Nisekoi significant in the discussion of this anime trope is that they aren't shows that just happen to have couples that take forever to get together like Toradora, but rather they are shows that seek to play up this aspect to 11. Nozaki-kun's central conceit and strongest running gag is that the two will never get together, while Nisekoi's main draw and reason for its huge fan following is its constant flip-flopping of which girl will end up with the main guy, even though everyone knows that D Deep down, there's actually no way that Chitoge will lose out in the end. Yet, despite these similarities, the receptions of these shows are actually quite different. Nisekoi's first season currently boasts a 7.8 on Mao, while Nozaki-kun has an 8.2. Since Mao scores are extremely high, allow me to recontextualize these scores. Shows within the high 7 ranges are generally regarded as either cult hits or mediocre popular shows, while shows within the 8 range are usually regarded as beloved. Thus, it is easy to tell that Nozaki-kun's reception is way better than that of Nisekoi. Now, the obvious question here is, why? So let's try to figure this out by listing out the positives and negatives of each show. So let's start by talking about Nisekoi. There's definitely a lot to like about Nisekoi. While the animation's never really that outstanding or fluid, Studio Shaft makes it apparent that it's them with their iconic off-kilter visual presentation, though more toned down in comparison to their other titles like Bakemonogatari or Sangatsu no Lion. The color scheme is very pleasant, and the character designs are very identifiable, except for Onodera's sister who looks exactly like her for some reason. Furthermore, while I'd argue that the character writing in the show is less than stellar, and in some cases utter garbage, I do appreciate the short moments during the show during which a character will act like a person with some semblance of common sense. Also there's an Ava reference in episode 15. Yet, as shown by its somewhat middling scores on Mal, relative to the rest of the site of course, there's also a lot to hate. Like that time where after misunderstanding after misunderstanding, Onodera finally nuts up and tries to confess to Raku, only to be interrupted by a baseball, or that time that Onodera tries to do it again is interrupted by a phone call, or that time that Onodera tries to do it again and it turns out that Raku was asleep the whole time. WHAT?! You get what I'm saying. The main appeal of Nisekoi is that it is an escapist fantasy in which you pick one of its lineup of potential waifus and violently defend it against other people who chose differently. Yet everyone knows, just based on the character designs and promotional art alone, that no matter what, Chitoge will always win. This means that the only reason that its readership doesn't just leave after realizing that their favorite girl isn't going to win is simply the fact that they want to keep on seeing this character do things. Thus, to satisfy this desire and retain readers, Nisekoi must must constantly cycle through all of its girls in order to keep everyone happy. However, this also has the side effect of making everything about the series that isn't about developing the main romance or your specific waifu seem completely pointless. Look, Nisekoi was originally run in Shonen Jump, so it was built for longevity. However, to do so, it does not tell an extremely long story. In fact, it tells a very short story, but it manages to make it so long by constantly skirting around the point with over-the-top and infuriating plot contrivances. It is truly a very simple story. Boy kind of likes a girl, but no one is sure which girl it is. Now let's talk about Nozaki-kun. Nozaki-kun is often harped on by SOME people that accuse it of failing to be the series that it sets out to be. Which is a fair misconception, though it is still a misconception. I mean, look at those tags. Comedy? Romance? School? The misunderstandings are over the top in their frequency and the context in which they are employed, and understandably are infuriating to those watching to see a romance actually blossom. There's also much complaint about how the characters in Nozaki-kun remain staunchly within their predetermined gimmick. Furthermore, the character designs aren't as standout as those in Nisekoi, and its color palette and direction style is basically the same as any other high school romantic comedy anime. That being said, there simply is so much more stuff to like here and all of it boils down to authorial intent. The central joke of the series is that Sakura and Nozaki will never get together, which is indicative of the larger conceit of being an anime about shoujo manga in which the tropes are played up to a ridiculous degree. 
Yet, that isn't even the only thing going on with this show. As previously noted, the characters each have a strong gimmick that is both endearing and fun to see mixed with others. Yes, they are just gimmicks, but that's all the series really needs. Unlike Nisekoi, which feels the need to develop every single girl to draw as much mileage out of the potential fan followings each character could receive, Nozaki-kun's main intention as a story is to be a gag comedy. The characters serve little more than different interchangeable components that create different gag scenarios. But isn't that bad writing, you ask? Generally, it would be. But the reason it works here is because it is not born out of laziness, but rather via authorial intent. After all, this is exactly how Nozaki views the world, nothing more than a pool of creativity to draw upon for inspiration for his manga. For an author to write a story about the central character having this outlook, she herself must think that way, at least in some capacity, as it is literally impossible to write a character that you yourself are not, in at least some way. Naturally, the nature of the comedy within the series would then reflect this aspect of the author's worldview and mindset. Which brings me back to Nisekoi. By far the most notable commonality between the stories of these two shows is the constant dodging over the instigation of a relationship between the two main love interests. In other words, the complete lack of romantic progress. So why is it infuriating in Nisekoi but funny in Nozaki-kun? Well, in my opinion, it all goes back to authorial intent behind each series. When I watch any given confession scene in Nisekoi crash and burn before any real progress is made, I see an excuse to either make the viewer think that their girl can still win, or an excuse to keep the show running so the viewer can keep on seeing his waifu. When I was watching Gekan Shoujo Nozaki-kun, I knew immediately that Sakura and Nozaki would never get together because of how clearly this intention was telegraphed via the opening scene. I mean, Sakura literally confesses in full force twice in the episode, mind you, and gets an autograph both times for her efforts. Yet all of this is justified in-universe due to how well Nozaki's character is established with these confessions, while also remaining consistent throughout the entire series. This is in stark contrast to how in Nisekoi, the thing that stops the confession from taking full effect is usually some deus ex machina device that has little or nothing to do with the scene. Furthermore, the confession scenes in Nisekoi are always like one second away from inciting the relationship, while the ones in Nozaki-kun are doomed before they even start simply due to how dense Nozaki is. It's like Nisekoi's dangling a dollar in front of you, while Nozaki-kun is simply laughing at you for thinking that there is a dollar in the first place. Nisekoi just feels a little bit more manipulative, and no amount of good production design can prevent the sensation of being cheated from being infuriating. Nozaki-kun, on the other hand, is simply taking this trope into consideration and playing up its ridiculousness as much as possible. And if you couldn't read that this was the intention in the first place, you were going to be let down because you were expecting a different show from what Nozaki-kun was trying to be. Thanks for watching the video. By the way, we hit 300 subs! and I'm still not going to do anything about it. But here's an idea. I've been recently watching a lot of the first seasons of a bunch of shows that Studio Bones has made, and I was wondering if um, you guys would be interested if I did a series covering all of the second seasons of these and comparing them to the first seasons. Kind of like uh, Ego Raptor's sequelitis, but with anime. Um, if you're interested, let me know in the comments, and if you're not, uh, don't do anything. And it will never be made if no one wants it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.